Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading of Dreamscape by J.N. Sheets, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me. Chapter 1. Wild frantic air caught in my throat as I jolted away, gasping for a full breath, my hands desperately clawing at my desk for a tangible object to ground the tear speeding away in my chest. This was reality. This here. The wooden and splintered table with a lamp in the corner giving a dim hum of light to my dorm room, books and papers scattered across its surface. The somersaults of terror in my gut were not real. I hoped they weren't. No, I'm safe. Locked away in my room behind layers of security, those squeezing grumbles were nothing more than the fleeting grip of a nightmare. What was that? What the hell was that? I repeated out loud, breaking the silence in the room and throwing the question out to the universe, as if the universe could answer back, not that I imagined it would if it could. Beads of sweat formed by my temples and rolled down the sides of my face. I wasn't sure if it was from my panicked thrashing or the uncomfortably warm temperature of my dorm room. It was the first thing I noticed, the thick, heat, the thick blanket of heat as my senses unfrazzled and my wits returned. The dorm rooms on this end of the building were always freezing, and the school didn't allow standalone heaters in the room. Not that I blamed them. Most college freshmen were irresponsible on good days. On bad days, everyone acted like a bunch of unsupervised teenagers. It was a wonder half of the buildings on campus were still standing. Thankfully, my dorm building was up for renovations on the ancient heating pipes over winter break. No more nights with shivering hands cupped around a hot cup of coffee to keep warm. Instead of the subtle edges of frost blooms forming around the borders of my labored breaths, the air burned inside my lungs leaving them raw and my throat hoarse as I coughed. I found it painful to take in a proper breath, feeling as if I swallowed poor sand when I tried to clear my throat. The layers of thick clothing I'd put on to combat the chill in the room were now unbearable as I stripped the large sweater over my head and tossed it on into the shadows. Underneath, my shirt was soaked with sweat, and a warm glow softened my skin as if kissed by late summer sun. Impossible. December, on an average year, is the furthest from summer in Portstown. This year by far was by far the worst cold in the air this year was by far the worst cold the area had experienced in two decades, according to the local newspaper. Most of the eastern seaboard was in the same predicament, a polar vortex they were calling it, and it had the north northern east coast in its merciless grip. I was, was sure Hell had frozen over along with everything else in the area. Hell. The idea gave me an uneasy shiver remembering the events of last year when all my friends tried to kill me using black dogs. That was my introduction to the supernatural world and it wasn't a pleasant time in the least. For all I knew, Hell was beneath a thin surface beneath a thin, thin surface layer of the town or maybe down that dirt road which disappeared into the part of the forest no one liked to venture. Perhaps it was behind the innocent-looking door of the mystery house splattered with orange and black paint which belonged to the local crazy, a random scruffy guy who wandered about muttering to himself. Who knew? I didn't. Never again would I make the assumption I understood the world around me, taking my reality at face value. I wouldn't be that arrogant again. With my mental declaration of the last... With my mental declaration, the last of the distorted sleep haze fell away and I lifted my head to come face to face with the monster who had roused me. Jinx, I growled. The little green-eyed devil of a cat was sitting there on the desk, happily finding a spot on my open notebook with a paw and claw extended in my direction. His pitch black fur faded into the shadows out of the range of the desk lamp as he cocked his head to the side in question. You little bastard, I thought to myself as I sat up more, giving a glance over my shoulder to see my securely closed and locked door. How the hell did he always manage to get in here? Not only did I make sure my room was locked every time I entered, paranoid habitat, <clears throat> but I was on top, I was on the top floor of the building. The windows at this level didn't open and I was five stories up. Way back in a corner where no one ventured down except the girl who just had the room across the hall. He could have wandered in if someone opened the main doors on the ground level, I suppose, but then what? There was no way he could make it into the stairwells with their heavy doors and snappy springs. I've seen football players stacked 
and muscles struggle with those doors. So he rides the elevator up. I chuckled at the image of a little black cat strolling into the narrow elevator, nose and tail high, like he owned the building. People looking on in question as he takes the seat, waiting patiently for the elevator doors to close. Story of the week on campus, and for those students who didn't believe they would want proof of their own, <clears throat> needing to witness the strange occurrence for themselves. Going as far as to wait up all night in the dorm ground floor lobby, brimming with impatient silence to catch sight of the odd cat riding the elevator. The curious ball of fluff making his way in through the front door as the student casually exits or enters, weaving between legs and feet as he strides toward the elevators. His body stretching up to press the call button with the bat of a pole before sitting down to wait for the car to arrive. What a sight. Jinx, Maori Tower's personal mascot. A walking party trick for everyone to gossip about. That's all I needed. Eventually, people would get curious to see who he was going to visit every night, and the devil would lead them right to me. I didn't need nor want the attention. Attention meant people, and people often had ill intentions. <laughs> Thanks, I mentally cursed him. Attention was not something I wanted, and who knows what the RA, resident advisor, would say if they caught me with a cat in my room. College life. One big, complicated mess. With a groan, I put my hands to my head to rub away the tension building while the stealthy little beast pulled at my hair and gave an innocent meow. Don't you meow at me, I scolded him. How do you keep getting in here, and why? What do you have against me sleeping? Over the last few months, the two of us had fallen into a ritual of sorts. I fall asleep, usually studying or reading at my desk, and Jinx appears in my locked room to startle me awake. Sometimes it's not all that bad. There have been a few times he's helped keep me up and alert while cramming at the last minute for a test. The cat is better than coffee most of the time. Then there were the nightmares that started two nights ago. Then, like tonight, I'm more than happy to have, jinx, have a jinx alarm. I don't remember the nightmares, so they can't haunt me, haunt me in the waking hours. But still, those nights are anything but restful. Two weeks into my first college semester, right when I was finally getting settled, I started having dreams. Odd dreams. A lot of odd dreams. Vivid, memorable, and intense with emotion type of dreams. Ones that lingered long after waking and left a feeling of exhaustion. In one, I'm, explore I'm an explorer doing the whole Tomb Raider thing. In another, I'm on a romantic cruise falling in love. Others included rock Others included expert rock climbing, traveling to Asia, big family dinners, lovely nights spent under the stars, and a, var a variety of other delightful adventures. Cozy dreams, but still odd and intense. I never dreamt like that before or with such intensity. I've had the standard anxiety dreams in the past where I'm half naked at school or a big event. I've even dreamed about mixing the wrong compounds in chemistry, resulting in an explosion taking out the entire school but nothing quite so vivid, and I rarely ever remember past a day or two. This was different. Every detail, and there were a lot of details, every emotion, thrill, heart-pounding moment of being on a cliff face or sharing a kiss on the deck of a cruise ship stayed with me when I woke. There were times I opened my eyes and swore I could smell the ocean, feel the limitless breeze of mountains chilling my skin, it was difficult to distinguish dream from reality most of the time when I woke. With a sigh, I glanced at Jinx again, knowing I was in for a long night. Once Jinx got into my room, he refused to let me go back to sleep, doing everything possible to keep me awake. From whining for food, playing with my blankets while I was in them, meowing loudly for no reason, hissing, growling, and clawing at my head when I dozed off. In general, being a pain in the ass. I was in a state of perpetual exhaustion thanks to him and my newfound restless sleep, neither of which I had any control over. Why? Why are you doing this to me? I asked the little devil as I sat back and stretched in my desk chair. It did little to push away the lingering tension in my body. Jinx, per usual, ignored my question and started cleaning the paw he used to claw me. I reached for him and drew the black cat into my arms, disturbing his bath. Turnabout's fair play, I chuckled to myself, cuddling the animal close to my chest. 
Look here, you little demon. Finals are coming up, and I need to be able to study and sleep. So we must come to an understanding, I lectured him, pulling my mouth into a stern line so he would know I was serious. He offered a purr in reply. Shameless, I said, shaking my head. You're utterly shameless. It was hard to be mad at the little guy, especially with those big kitty eyes of his and animal charms. Large, round, bright green symbols of innocence. A soft expression on his face as his chest rumbled in delight. I melted, helpless. Shameless, I repeated with a chuckle. He responded by nuzzling his head against my chin in a devious ploy to, de to demolish my annoyance. Yes, I love you too, spoiled brat. Giving Jinx a kiss on the head, I turned to place him on my messy bed, setting him on the rumpled pile of plush blankets and wrinkled sheets. So I'm a messy person, at least... Or at least I am one now. College tends to suck the importance and energy out of daily rituals. First to go, The first to go was neatness, followed closely by diet and sleep. In high school, I kept my bed made, cl clothes clean, and put away in my room in perfect order. Everything had its place, neat and orderly. Now, well, research papers trumped a clean room, which meant the pile of dirty clothes in the corner overflowing from the basket had become a standard fixture. Laundry was the last thing currently on my mind. It's been somewhere between having a healthy dinner and brushing my hair this week. So long as I had something clean to throw on at eight in the morning, as I rushed out of my room, I didn't care. After running around campus all day between classes, listening to lectures, studying, and finishing my campus job, the rest of my time was spent doing classwork. Mustering up a fraction of energy to wash clothes rarely happened, and when it did, the clothing never made it off my former roommate's bed. She ran off three weeks into the semester. Literally three weeks in, she simply stopped showing up. After she left, I wasn't assigned a new roommate, which I was fine with. I enjoyed the extra room and not having to adjust to a new person always being around. Now it was me, the quiet, studious neighbor across the hall, and on occasion, Jinx. Perfect for studying and getting assignments done, but it meant I could let <clears throat> myself go a little. Okay, a lot. I wasn't proud of the discarded coffee cups in the cafe from the cafeteria littering the windowsill, but the trash can was full. A lazy excuse, I know, but every time I went down the hall to the trash chute, I was flocked by girls that reminded me of Marty and Allie. All their dorm rooms were open. Girls stood in their doorways, talking across the hall as music mixed with giggles and gossip. For me, walking that hall was no different than stepping into the past, an agonizing reminder of a happier time and the nightmare that came after. How pathetic. Besides, the trash wasn't that big of a deal, but the rest of it, I don't know. It often felt like my inner chaos was manifesting in my room. Sweaters and jackets were thrown over the foot of my bed. A stack of textbooks discarded near an open book bag. A sock or two tossed about, and the small standalone closet looked as if it had been, it looked it looked as if it had thrown up into the room. A royal mess, both comforting and distressing. Inside the homely space, tucked away with books in my belongings, and behind a securely locked door, I was safe. Nothing was getting in here without me knowing, except Jinx, apparently.